I've got a treat for y'all today. Y'all hang tight. We're gonna do something I ain't never done today. All right, so here we are. Y'all see this right here? This is what we're gonna do today. I've got it lined up. Uh, John and Rose still here visiting with them. I'm in Jackson, South Carolina right now. This is the home of Jarrett Rifles right here, the Beanfield Rifles that have been custom built for years right here at this location. So we're about to drive on in here and I'm gonna take y'all inside of the inner workings of, of these rifles and, the, and you're gonna get to meet the Jarrett's right quick. So y'all hang tight. This is gonna be a really treat for anybody who's an outdoor enthusiast, likes gun shooting, stuff like that. And even some names you're gonna hear pop up like Daryl Underhart Sr., Davey Allison, Neil Bonnet, Norman Schwarzkopf, people like that are customers of the Jarrett's right here. So y'all hang tight, we'll be right back. All right, so here I am, I'm with Jay Jarrett. We're in the gun vault, right? Yeah. We're at Jarrett Rifles right here in uh, Jackson, South Carolina. That's right. I was, we were talking just a minute ago. This is so cool to be here because y'all are the original long range precision rifle makers that there That's ever right. has been, right? That's right. That's right. Like, we got started right here. There's so many other guys there and other companies that do it now. That's kind of a big thing. But y'all were, y'all were the original ones and I, re I remember these guys, y'all know I like to hunt and outdoor enthusiasts, stuff like that. I remember reading about y'all in the ma hunting magazines back in the 80s before, you know, the internet, stuff That's like right. that. I remember y'all, the Beanfield Rifles, 300 win mag, that's, that's right. what y'all shot. Y'all guaranteed it to hit out of the box. <laughs> and uh, I just, I love that stuff like right. that. And, but then y'all branched out, y'all, Y'all build, y'all do any caliber now, right? Yeah, we pretty much do any caliber now. We started in 2000 making our own actions, uh, 1993 making our own barrels. So, so now we make everything. Every everything is in house right here. Y'all get the stock. Y'all got your CNC machines. So y'all don't buy anything. No, except the trigger, you know, and the rings and stuff like that. Uh, but everything else is made here, and it's the doing the accuracy thing like we're doing. We develop a load for every rifle that we build. You know, having control of everything. Has, uh definitely helps us out with the accuracy. Because y'all are loading your own ammunition right That's here right. too. Y'all work your loads We up. actually shoot every gun and, and we have to shoot three three shot groups and they have to average under a half inch before it ever leaves out the door. So it's a, it's a proven deal. It's not, not like taking a gun off the shelf and will it shoot, will it not shoot, will it, will it shoot. And when y'all shooting like that, are you shooting you human shooting or are you shooting out of a bag? We're absolutely shooting off bags. Um, I'll show you in a little bit. Um, we, we're not trying to duplicate anything that the customer can't do. Um, we're trying to prove what they're going to do. Um, and we're shooting off bags, just, just sandbags. Um, we've not had real good luck off some of those, you know, the sleds and stuff. You know, it's yeah. kind of impossible to get on it the same way every right. single time. So. And y'all have a thousand yard range right here. A thousand too, yard right? range. We got um, out to three hundred here. We got a hundred yard indoor range here. Well, wow, so you're in a controlled bad. environment, right? When the weather there. gets bad, we don't always shoot it. But you know, when the wind gets up, you know, fifteen twenty miles an hour, and you're shooting around it, it costs you three or four dollars. You know, you you, yeah, yeah. you know, you get a little bit of wind drift on one bullet, and it messes up a group. You may leave that. You may leave that load, and it could have been a load. So, all right, so. Y'all know the story behind Cotton Top 3, all y'all do. The three stands for Dale Earnhardt. Okay, so Dale Earnhardt Sr. was one of y'all's customers. Good oh, yeah. friend of your dad's. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard stories, he would fly down in his helicopter. I have done that, and um, I, when I was growing up here, you know, which dad's house was right across the street, I, I can remember many a, a Monday morning after they would leave Talladega, you know, Childers and and Earnhardt and Neil Bonnet would come and they'd hunt for three or four days. And yeah, so you had you had Richard Childers, one of y'all's customers, yeah. Neil Bonnet, yep. Davy Allison. Davey Allison. Yep. All, anybody in the South, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, know those names, you know, just That's right. legends. That's right. Norman Schwarzkopf, Norman right? Schwarzkopf. Yep. Just name dropping with the big dogs right That's here. Right. And uh, it, it's just tremendous to meet, you know, you, everybody don't get to meet those people on a, uh, the level that we got to meet them here, just you know, out of their environment, just just normal, good old guys having a good people. time on a hunt. That's all. 
That is so cool. Well, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wander around here right quick. This is kind of a impromptu thing, and I just kind of dive bombed in on top of it. You know, y'all know how I roll and things like that. So we're gonna we're just I'm gonna let whatever he wants to show me. That's what y'all gonna get to see, and and that's do. But Jake, man, I appreciate you allowing you. me to come and and do this and show this to my people here on, you. uh, on YouTube. So because sure. YouTube, the social media is where it's at and definitely and stuff. So we'll be right back. That's cool, man. Yeah, they uh, they coat. You know, we're good customers. Uh, we're getting customers. This like 52 percent. I went home and coat all the bottling out of Charlotte. Okay. And the coat, when I was on a coat machine out there, and they was gonna switch it out. So y'all got it, huh? This was the only. This was the only one still left. After he got killed, they went around and took them all off because people were stealing them and stuff. Oh yeah. We had ours up until about a year ago, but they took the machine. But they ended up. They left that. Out. That's cool. It's not, it's not really We start with this 15.5 um, stainless steel. This uh, comes in about a 20 foot stick. Um, we cut it down to manageable size and put it in the uh, in the lathe here. Now we've got three mills and only one lathe, so most of it is mill work that we're doing All here. All mill work. So yeah. we take that and we part it off. We go ahead and thread it and we drill the initial hole all the way through the receiver. It's drilled and ringed. Um, to a certain spec, and then we put it in the uh, EDM machine over here. It's a computer operated machine also. This is a older machine, it's about a 1986. Um, but what it does is that it actually cuts the lug ways with wire. Um, wow. Oh. And it's a 10 thousandths wire right here. Wow. And we're, our action that we make is called a tri lock, so that means it's got three, three locks. Three locks. Um, 60 degree bolt throw. So we put the action body in the fixture here, like you see. And this head would come over and it basically shoots a stream of water down through this hole and it back down into this. So that's actually how the wire threads itself. The, the, it's basically a hollow stream of water, if you can imagine that. And then the wire's feeding through it so the water won't let the wire come out okay. of it. And wow. That's how it threads it. So once it's connected here, it feeds through the, uh, through the ribbon here and then into the box. Because once it's used one time, um, that's it. So once we get it threaded, um, this whole container fills up with water, and it basically has a electro, electro a magnetic uh, cut that it's doing with that wire. So that wire is continuously feeding around. Now you can see here um, the clover leaves that we've cut in there, being right. the lugways. So when we first started doing this, we would cut out the lugways, and it, the, they would fall down and break the break the wire every single time. So we started threading these three holes around here. So we put screws in here, cut half of all three, and then come back, put a new screw in, cut the other half, and that half a screw holds them from falling down in there and breaking it. Basically puts the action body between two centers and does what we call the long program. Cuts out the loading port, drills and taps the base screws, drills and taps the action screws, drills the trigger holes. Now, it being a three lug receiver, and we've cut out the lug ways there, we have actually cut away the uh, feed rails. So that's what he's working on over there now. We actually make a feed insert, which looks just like that. So you taking and, and it goes you taking right a lot of metal off of that to get it to right there. That's you? right. It is. Quite, quite that's what it's saying. It's, a, it's about a hundred, uh, about an hour and twenty-five minute program. Let me to do feel that. that one right there. Yeah, that's a lot of weight difference yeah. between that and that right there. That's right. yeah, pretty slick right there. So that's the start of it. All right. So we've got this bolt bushing that we make, um, and it it rides. It stays at the back of the receiver at all times. This keeps the back of the action concentric. You know, when you get, you get the lugs locked up here, but this keeps the back of the bolt tightens it Man, up. Those are some heck of a lugs right there. You don't right. you don't see anything like that in those factories That's right. And stuff right there. Now, so what we've got here, and I mean, some of your companies they'll they'll solder the bolt handle on the bolt. We mm -hmm. everything's screwed together here. So you got the bolt body. The, the bolt handle screwed into the bolt body, and then you got the firing pin assembly that screws into the back of that. So you can disassemble it very easily. Take it apart it's really easy. Um, we've done away with the, and this was not all the way finished, but we've done away with the ejector button spring. Like the ejector, when it kick, you know, when you pull up, pull it back, it's trying to kick it out the whole time, and it, some people don't like that for just kicking it on the dirt or whatever. So you've got complete control when you pull this bolt back. If you open it easy, it'll just flop it's out. Just right there in your hand. Or if you pull it back hard, it'll. Other actions, you'll see. You know, maybe one hole here. This is just a complete safety deal. 
Um, we've got four holes on our long action, so when you've got that bolt locked down, all four of those holes are pointing down towards the, the floor plate. So if you were to get a hot load, I mean, we're we're loading these these 300 jerks and stuff hot as we can load. We're right on the edge all the <laughs> right time. Right, you're pushing it to the limit. So you're going you're gonna to get a hot one every now and then. But, uh, but this is just designed to keep all that pressure out of your face. Um, so to direct it down instead right. of right at you. Got some, these bodies are all done here. He's got mm -hmm. some shorts and a few longs there. It, it, it doesn't seem like it, but it, we've got more time in those bolts than we do the rest oh, of yeah. the stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a pile of them right yeah. here, too. Yeah, he's making a big batch this time. Wow. This is where all the magic happens. This is a 416 stainless. So these are actually the barrels right here. Yeah, it comes in a 30-foot stick, and we, we cut it into those 30-inch <laughs> sticks there. Ain't that cool? We buy a good bit of it at the time because, you know, even though it's 416 stainless, there's different minor and major elements in that steel, and they all don't make good barrels. So what we do is we get three test test pieces before we buy a batch, and we'll make a 30 and a 7 and maybe a 243 or 6 millimeter or something like that. Is that right there has got to be perfect. It does. It's got to be perfect. It, it, it can vary so much. I mean, it can be where, you know, sometimes we'll allow, say, one – one batch of steel 500 times to get where we want to be, the other one might be 900. Did you so. take the most minute problem of thousands of an inch That's right. off right here out there at a thousand yards? It won't work. It, it's it's, won't it's work. bad. That's, <laughs> right. That's why we, we guarantee, you know, we keep our barrels within a tenth of a thousandth from one end to the other. A tenth of a thousand. And that, a half a tenth makes a difference. but. Uh, you know, if it's a little bit too big, then you know, you'll never get the velocity out of it. If it's a little bit too tight, you'll never get the velocity. So it's got to be that perfect. So this is our barrel part here. This is kind of what we work off of in batches. Um, now, now these have just come off of the rack that we just left over there. They've been faced and that's it. Um, um, once we do that, we cut this to a certain diameter where it'll fit in the drill. And on the back of the barrel, we've got all our basically everything about that barrel is on the stamped on the back of it mm -hmm. what what caliber it's going to be what twist it's going to be when we ream it we put an r on it when it's lapped it gets an l i mean so on and so forth so the first thing we do is cut this down to a certain diameter uh where to fit in the drill and then we run the deep hole drill all the way through that it's about a 30 minute process and then of course the, the drill would be locked into the, the lead screw here mm -hmm. locked in like so of course, you got 600 pounds of oil pressure coming through this carbide tip. So, and that's all. So we've got this trough cut in it. So basically, that oil is keeping the cutting surface clean, and it's forcing all of those chips back, pushing the shavings out. That's right, pushing them here. Oil recirculates outside and reuse, and then we take the chips out. This is this is actually was was threading the. Uh, this is drilling the initial hole in the barrel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And once we've done that, we spin around in this machine here and we pull two rimmers through. And this is to get rid of some of the tool marks that the drills left. Uh, one takes five and one takes three thousand. So we're talking about really. You really just kind of just kind of finishing the inside of the barrel just a yeah, little bit there, cleaning I mean, it up. Really small chips. Oh, yeah. I, mean, so. I see that. Everybody's got ARs, but you know, we, we feel like we make the most accurate. You know, these 223s, they're most of the time at group averages quarter inch. With this solution here we actually copper plate the inside of the barrel. Um, basically set it on the top of a cone and, and we fill it up and we tap it with a hammer and we're, we're getting the air bubbles out of the barrel. And that's one of the, the uh, lubrications that we do. Another one is this. And it's a, in a solid form now. Um, we heat it up to a bowl and it becomes a liquid at that point. We pour that liquid down in that barrel and it somewhat solidifies back. It's like a real soapy water. And that's the lubrication that we're using because we're using button rifling. There's many different ways to put rifling in the barrel, but button rifling is what we do. So we're not removing any metal whatsoever, so we need that lubrication to, to do that. We have different guides up here, different rates of twist. You got one in 10, one in nine, depending on what caliber, what bullet you're gonna shoot. So we put the guide in here. The barrel would be here and we attach the button to this. And so this is what actually puts the riflings. This is what no, the, um, the barrel's there, right? Right. And the button's gonna be screwed into this. Okay. So that button's gonna follow this. Okay. That's a guide. Okay. Oh, uh, you'll see it turn there. I'll see that. 
The lubrication thing seems pretty simple, but it's important because if you got one air pocket in there when he was doing that and it that button catches it, it's gonna bust the button off and then you gotta go all the way back to square one. <laughs> from from everybody else, barrel making especially, as we, we hand lap our barrels to get the we're doing two things with that. We're bringing the barrel up to size and we're getting rid of the tool marks at the same time. So we stick this rod up in the barrel, leave it about six inches, four or five inches short from the end. We pour out hot lead. Now this is one that I've taken and cutting off, but you can see how it would be attached there. Yeah. Now we're using that lead to, carry, to basically be the carrier for the lapping compound. So what we do is we lap a hundred strokes. We cut that one off, we pour a new one, we do another hundred strokes. Now we know, you know, on the sevens, we know it might it's probably gonna take 400 strokes, so, um, depending on the barrel taper and all that. So 400 strokes. So there's somebody. That's and that's here. on the low side. I mean, it could be as much, much as seven or 800. So there's somebody right here pushing and pulling yeah. it. <laughs> but you know, we got an air gauge over here. We got a bore scope, so we can constantly measure that barrel and get right to that sweet spot. And it, except it's got two little holes in it, mm -hmm. and basically we're measuring the inside of that barrel with the air. So let's say we were doing a 308. This would be 308, that would be 309, and that would be 307. So we've got calibrations that we do here. We calibrate the low side, we calibrate the big, the high side. So you're constantly changing air here. And we know we want that, that, that 308 barrel, we want it to be, you know, 307, 8, 307, 9, somewhere in there. Right on it. And then we got the bore scope that you can. Uh, well, you can look in it. Look in there, and see. The kits. Um, now we've got it separated. We got the short action. We got the standards. We got magnums. We got left hand, and then beam fields, barrel jobs, and ARs on this side. Um, so when somebody orders a rifle, they'll get a kit, uh, and they'll usually get a barrel first. Then they'll get an action, and we'll take that barreled action up front, and we'll fit chamber and crown it, thread it. Uh, a lot of times we put muzzle brakes on. Uh, once Mike brings that back and sticks the barreled action in the in the kit, then at that time I take it and I'm uh, going to fit it to a stock at that point. Um, this is one of our signature stocks, fiberglass. Um, we've done a lot of work on this to, um, to make this stock take out some steps in the work process. We've already put the pillars in here and they're already to the right length and everything. So all we've got to do is come in here and take the Dremel tool and remove some of this material, open up the lug area, and we can bed this, bed this barreled action in the stock today, and we can take it, pop it loose tomorrow, and put the pad on it, do the finish work, fill the barrel channel, do the filling around the, the floor plate and stuff like that. So do y'all y'all find a lot of people wanting the custom stuff and yeah, everything you do. still? Um, I mean, we still do a lot of the beam fill stuff, you know. Um, yep. We still do a lot of that. It, it, it wasn't really known, and we've, we've tried to advertise it some. A lot of people didn't know that we did barrel jobs on other guns and, and stuff like that. Sure. So, you know, a lot of our customers, most of them probably own 15, 20, 30 rifles, you know, and, and everybody's got rifles that they don't, they don't use because they don't shoot. So uh, sure. we're doing a little ad campaign now to, to put that out there and so it's, it's been tremendous um, so you're um, taking rifles in you're letting people send you rifles that's right and then y'all are fine-tuning them yeah we can we can assess you know what may or may not be wrong with it we can look at the bedding if there is bedding or oh yeah look at the barrel we can say look you know we can fix make this gun shoot with a barrel you know and a bedding job or, mm -hmm. or something like that so um, it's taking something that that you've put on the shelf over there and it's collecting the dust that you actually a little bit of money can make it work making it you're making it usable is what that's you're right. doing improving it making it usable and then sending it back to them and, right. and all that that's and a lot of times that'll lead to, to to us doing more stuff for them and those customers and stuff yeah like that. And they're gonna it's like a ripple effect they're gonna talk to their friends that's and they're right. gonna say hey the Jarrett's did this for me I sent it to them you know right. and, and, and I've got that. people I mean I got a guy who was up here the other day he said man if I'd have known y'all did that 15 years ago I mean I, I oh yeah you know, so, oh yeah it's a little, you know, some people think we only do our own, but but there is a, a, the crew of people that, that they want all Jared. And, uh, and uh, because there's not a, you know, a lot of people out there today is putting parts together, you know, and, and uh, people like that. You know, the, the old school gunsmiths, you're not seeing them much anymore no. like you used to. Uh, we're fortunate where I live to have two. One, he closed down shop for a long time and then he reopened back up. But, 
across the landscape, they're not there right. like they used to be. The That's economy, right. different things like that have killed them. All right, so what, what we got here, we've, when I finished stocking the rifle, we've, we've got a, basically a rifle in the rough is what I call it. Mm -hmm. It's completely built, but it's uh, not painted or anything. So at this point, we, care, we do a pre-tune pre inspection where we check for feeding, um, safety works, trigger works, everything. Any, we try to prevent the little things that can keep the gun from shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point and I mean you know, people are human and stuff gets overlooked sometimes but that's why we we try to double check that uh, once we've done that pre-inspection we take it out to the range and we break it in and what that consists of is we we shoot it one time we clean it we shoot it we clean it we shoot it we clean it when we get the five rounds we soak it with sweets and get the copper out so we're putting the copper in taking it back out and you can do that proper break in in about 20 rounds um, if you don't do that and you just start shooting you know 15 20 rounds through it at the right out the box mm -hmm. um you know it's going to take you probably 150 rounds to to get it broken right do y'all is all y'all stuff just pure custom stuff made to order or do y'all are y'all building any like stock type rifles like say a 308 that y'all build yeah. that y'all that y'all kind of stock somebody wants something like we, that we try to keep some in stock um but they don't always work out that way sometimes we'll build some show guns we call them to take to the sure. shows and sometimes we'll we we'll have one or two of those left around or something like that. So um, mm -hmm. once we've got the break-in process done, then we uh, then we develop the load for the rifle. And, and I'll carry you up to the loading room in a second. But we're, we're loading three rounds. We're stepping out to the range. We're shooting a group. Um, we're making an adjustment on powder, primer, bullet, whatever, till we get those three three-shot groups and a half to average under, under a half inch. Um, a lot of times they're way better than that. Y'all look at this, this, I was looking at this night force right here. Look at the, the mounts on that scope. That's a, that's a pretty gun, fluted yeah. like it is and all. This is a, of course the Creedmoor craze is, is pretty damn popular now. Oh yeah, everybody's went nuts on the yeah. 6.5. Yeah. shoot, I mean, the group average on this one's 190. 190. You know, with a 130 gram burger. We, uh, Matt back there takes the, takes the gun all the way apart. We be blast all the metal parts. Uh, and then do use a phenolic rosin on that, and it's baked on. And then he also preps the stock, um, primes the stock, and paints those. As you can see here, we got mm -hmm. pretty much any color anybody. Y'all just kind of rough it up enough to where to shoot to make sure it's going to shoot. And then once you yeah, figure definitely. out everything, then you come on back and you put the you finish your own out. Then that's right. I love and, I love some bars. And, uh, this is one of the Z8 eyes, which is very popular now. Mm -hmm. I, it's the clearest scope I've ever looked through myself. But what we can do, we've got the load for this rifle. We can get a custom turret made. Mm -hmm. So it's for that load and that gun, and we're you know zero stop at 200 and 250, and mm -hmm. this one's locked. But no, you just set it, it to whatever out. whatever yardage you're going to be on, right. and hold right on it, and squeeze off. That's right. Takes a lot of guesswork. So first lady in the box, right? Here. What he started with, huh? Right what Jared started with, right here, old school. <laughs> Hey Kyle, how hey, you doing? Great to see you. So you sitting here loading bullets, huh? Loading bullets and shooting bullets. Loading bullets and shooting bullets. That's it. What's you loading right there? That's that's a big boy right there. What is that? Three thirty-eight Jared. Three thirty-eight Jared. Yeah. What green? What green is that you putting in there? Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Knock dog out of something on it. Oh yeah. Looks like you probably got that one. Yep. Yeah. He's writing down right here as he does the load, so we don't duplicate and he knows what he's trying. See he's. He's got a point five, point four, point three right there. there. And that's what he's doing here. Is he, he's just loading customers' ammo, so he'll get a copy of the load and the amount. Mm -hmm. That guy wants two hundred rounds. That guy wants two fifty, two fifty, and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we get people to get a thousand rounds at the time. Now he does have the. Uh, so he does have the. He does have the electronic. But it's right within there. a, you know, within a tenth of a gram. See, that's what that's what I use right there. Is one just like that right there. <laughs> I'm only doing five rounds of this, but if I'm doing hundreds and hundreds of rounds, it really does help a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those things are sweet. Once you calibrate them and get them set up, you just hit the button, and it goes, and it, it always trips me out how it it just it gets right on the money on those things. There's a couple of things. I calibrate every morning, and also I change the speed on it, so it uh, goes a little bit faster. Uh-huh. I've told people in my shop, I got a Seco building, a metal building, 40 by 60. I have an upstairs room in it that's nothing but reloading stuff. I told him, I said, if you ever catch them on fire, just, just leave. Yeah, just yeah. go ahead and leave. He gets in there, he tests it up, gets it ready to go. 
and then once he figures out what the gun likes, then it comes to you and you start chunking them out. You look at the like look that. at the data right there. You put it in. So he's te he also tells you how far down in there to see it for you. We have an LOA on this one's going uh, three point six uh, three eight. Three point six three eight. Usually three point six four is the average uh, three hundred yard. That's mm -hmm. the three hundred yard. That's what the company was founded on, right. We're using a Barn TTS one eighty. Which is our most popular bullet? We see the blue boxes right there. Right. This is the most popular bullet. This is what we. This is what this yeah. company's all about. This one. Right. The 300 uh, Jerry is a neck down. 300 Ren Mag, then mm -hmm. blown out to get a different shoulder on it. Mm -hmm. That's our pet caliber. Oh yeah, boys, we we finna go into firing range here. You got the 338. Let them see Look at him. All right, so what do we got here? 338 uh, Jarrett. It's on a uh, Browning action. That's what would be considered a bean field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's going to be? Bean yeah. field. And uh, right now I'm going to work on a down there at 100 yards. I have targets. You see these targets right here. That's what they are. They're down there. Yes, sir. That's what they'll be. That's what you'll send to the That's customer. That's what I'm shooting at, mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> I have two down there already that qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely, uh, possibly three, but definitely two. What I'm gonna try to do uh, right now is shoot another one. It should be cool. Mm -hmm. It's been in the cooler. That, stick your hand up there, you'll feel the blowing wind through there. Right here? Yeah. Oh yeah. So help cool the barrel you'll down. You'll see that we got fans down there. Right. That blows through there, yeah, and we just set it in there and it blows up through here. Uh huh. Because if you didn't cool the barrel, it'd take you twice oh, as long, a long before you could shoot time. it again. Right. So you're wanting that thing, you're wanting to come down back all the way down to temperature. Come down there clo close. Mm -hmm. Close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's going to be cold. But it don't need another round to go through it as soon three, as you. Three is good, uh, although I can, you can get by shooting five that I found. My, I don't like to shoot any more than five, and the only reason I shoot five is like sighting guns in. Right, and you're shooting through a chronograph right there, I'm so you see. Through the chronograph, and I'm shooting at the targets down there. Okay. And I can see, and this is 25 power Zeiss. So you you have no trouble seeing it down no, there. No, I have a, a 35 and a 40 that I use too. Mm -hmm. Not a Zeiss, but this this is a Zeiss, and it has a, a rectangle in there that's small. You can mm -hmm. look. Go ahead and hit. It wasn't bad because you got the break, break on, on it. Well, you can feel that pressure. Y'all, you do. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> hey, before I shoot this one. Now look at it. Well, it'll be at least definitely three. Hold that one. Right. That one's shooting good. Yes, it is. <laughs> we just take this and put it, and put it over it. Where so he's, yeah. put, he's putting air, he's got a fan down there coming right. up through that PVC and it's blowing air through that barrel to cool that barrel back down. And you feel the air coming out of that action right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. To cool it down. Help speed that process up. And Jay, I appreciate it. Well, I mean, just to come in off the street, you didn't know who I was or anything other than just from John, right. you know, him you know, hooking m me up and, and all that. And to be able to come through and, and walk through your place from start to finish and see everything. The cool thing was, was your people that work here are just as friendly as you are and they'll talk. Right. I mean, was back here in the reloading room, he asked me, he said, do you have any more questions, you know? And so right. I was sharing with him some of the things that, that I do, you know, and he's, 
listen to what I said, right. you know, because I'm having to, I don't exactly have the tools like y'all have, so I have to do it a little bit more old school way of working loads up, you know, and seating bullets and stuff like that, figuring out how far I want the, the bullet right. to sit in the casing, you know, and, and stuff, but, and then, I wasn't expecting to get to see a gun shot. Right. That was good. Yeah, that was good. It was at the end of that tune, and uh, it, I mean, you get to see um, what we do, and uh, and it's all the little things like we talked about a while ago. It's all the little things that goes into making these rifles, and you know, as as a customer, as a potential customer, as you may or may not be, you know, we want to show people off street. We have people coming all the time for tours, and that's what we're trying to do is show you what we're doing, show you why we're different. So y'all, y'all are online, right? Yes. And you're online. You can find you online, JarrettRifles.com. Jared JarrettRifles.com and uh, on Instagram also. Instagram. Y'all on Facebook? Not on Facebook. Not, Not Facebook, on Facebook. Right. Okay. So y'all can all include a link down below to their two Jarrett rifles in the bottom of the description if y'all want to go uh, check them out and th things like that. But y'all know I like to do videos with the hometown type people, and y'all sure qualifies all the time. And, and then the other side of this too, y'all own Cowden, it's a place called Cowden Plantation. This right here. That's right. Y'all have roughly 10,000 acres. That's right, it's all in one piece. All right here in the Savannah River that's bottom. That's right. And you farm about 2,500 acres yes, on it. Yes, and uh, so you get out on a tractor for therapy oh, yeah, and that's stuff exactly like that. Right. That's and, right. uh, and so I've got a lot of tractor videos, man. People love to see my. Yeah, they do. I come back, we're gonna have to get on a tractor and yeah, play a little bit and everything. So we'll see some yeah. of that stuff. But uh, I just I can't express to you how much I appreciate we, you. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate you coming and uh, and all that. Yeah. But so all of my stuff is in clickable links right down below. And Jay, I know you you you've watched some of my stuff, but you're not really familiar with it. And that's okay. That's perfectly right. fine. Everything. But I always end all of my videos. My sign off is later taters. So and I, so you got to do that. You got to do the later taters for me. And I, I tell you what, I, I get when I when I get back, I'll send uh, I'll send some shirts okay. to John. So my because I got a full line of merchandise. Right. I'll send some. I'll send one for your dad and, right. and one for you, awesome. and uh, get y'all some Cotton Top Three stuff and everything. But man, I, I appreciate it. So I'm gonna let Jay do the sign off right here. So you got you got to. Don't don't be flat on me. You got it. Lighter tires. Lighter tires. We'll see y'all. <laughs>